It's a beautiful Wednesday, another Wednesday on the Women's Series program. Welcome to the Women's Series program where we capture developments and stories that impact women. If this is your first time, let me officially welcome you. Um, we've had a good series throughout the months. We've looked at um, mental health awareness for women, and this is tied to the World Health Organization Mental Health Awareness Day that was marked on the 10th of October. Now, to have some sort of recap that we've had throughout the month, um, we've looked at mental health awareness. Let's take care of our health and let's make it a reality. We've had different guests come talk to us and someone even shared a personal story. But today we're looking at emotional wellness and um, we're taking through a guide, going through what it is, why it is important. And I have with me a counselor to do justice to all of my questions today. We're going to have like a really good chit chat, nothing serious, a relaxed environment. So join me as we go on. Tune in to Web TV Day to stay up to date and informed on the financial market, personal finance, and more. We have got you covered with all your favorite TV shows, economy and politics, market review, women's series, millennial talk, Islamic Finance Weekly, The Brief, exclusive interviews, events and we keep you up to date on all the updates in the financial market with the market opening gone. Watch premium content. Watch web TV. Same news, different perspective. Welcome back to the Women's Series program. Like I said the other time, we're looking at emotional wellness for women today and I have with me the founder and the head counselor at the Attitude Development International. I'm speaking with Dr. Timmy Oyebodi. Good afternoon, Ma. How are you doing? Fine. You seem so relaxed. And <laughs> by the way, we are at that place, so she allowed us in. She welcomed us well, so thank you for the warm reception. Thank you for coming around. You're thank welcome. You. How's work been? Oh, good. Good enough. And how are you? I mean, I think I've asked this question all through the month. I've had to ask my guests how they are, how they are faring, because mm. we're talking about mental health. So mm. we need to be very concerned about one another. So how are you doing? How's work? How, how are you handling the stress and the pressure mm. that comes with it? So by asking that question already shows that you're becoming mentally aware. aware. <laughs> yes, I have to exemplify what I'm preaching. Yeah. Yes, because in, for those of us who are health workers or who are in the space of mental health, mm -hmm. therapies and all the likes. We understand that question, how are you? And we don't throw it around like a casual greeting. Mm -hmm. So once we ask someone, how are you? It really means we want to know. Mm -hmm. So I believe you also want to know. Yeah. Good. I'm concerned I'm about my guests. I'm doing <laughs> fine. I'm doing very fine. Okay. I've had a good day. My day started a very good note. Mm -hmm. And it's so sweet to have you and your team around here. Thank you. Thank you for having us as well. Um, I'd like to start by asking that this path that you've chosen for yourself okay. in this part of the world mm. can be seen as something very much abstract or something inconsequential. I don't want to use the word inconsequential, but not valued as much as it, mm. it's supposed to. Why did you feel there was a need for you to choose a career in this path? All right, so normally I would always say that um, counseling found me. Mm. Okay, so now that I chose it, Mm. Rather, I would say I was chosen. I was chosen to be on this pathway mm. by the work itself. Mm. Okay, so um, yes, like you said, rightly said, um, this is not something that is very common or very acceptable to the to us on the side of the world. Where you have a lot of concern that why do I need to go in for therapy? What's yeah. what's the big deal? Um, do you know? So a lot of mindset or misconceptions about counseling and therapy so years down the line i had been uh, i had had my own fair share of life in terms of abuse in terms of trauma in terms of um, identity issues and so when i began to find my clarity when i'm trying to find healing uh, one of the first major things that dawned on me was there were so many other people in the space becoming aware that if i could heal other people need the process to healing. And then of course, being a Christian, understanding that, oh, 
I had the faith to depend on. Unfortunately, I also know that beyond the faith, additionally, the fact that man is made up of three things, the body, the spirit, and the soul. Yeah. And so for us to be heal or to be total, the three needs to be dealt with. That every part of us needs to be handled practically actually mm. so that that kind of informed it and like i said my own struggle in the past and having to go through my own faces and healing birth this journey mm. and i still recall it years down when uh, because i started out about 16 17 years ago wow. and i still remember um it was some years down the line maybe like 10 years ago when um, i'd met someone at the plane and he had said to me oh you mean that's what you're doing in nigeria no, it can't work. You can't get caught. You're going mm. to be bankrupt. You're going to, how do you make money? You know, questions like that. How do you make that a job, a career mm. to be a counselor? And I had said, um, whatever it takes, we're going to keep pushing this. Mm. If people in the Western part of the world understand and take advantage of therapy and pay attention to their mental health mm. so they could have a very good system that works, then that same thing can apply here in Africa. So we can build it, we, we can keep on till people understand. And trust me, this is how many years down the line, I bet me, you, me, a lot of people understand now. Mm. Yeah, not the whole crowd yet, but a lot of people willingly are signing up for therapy, willingly understand the place of mindfulness or mental health in the journey of wellness. Mm. That's very interesting. I mean, it's very important that, um, and I'm happy that we are now gradually warming up to the reality and the fact that it is important to, as much as we take care of our physical health, our mental health also mm. has to be taken care of. Mm. So I was having this conversation with my friend a few days ago and um, I just told her, I just bumped into her that, um, I think one way or the other, conversation led to mental wellness and she had this to say. Mm. She just said, I don't believe in it. And I don't think a lot of Nigerians believe in it because it is invalid. People don't even, they, do, they don't even think about it. Okay. They, they don't want to talk about that side. Okay. It's, it's something that is easily shoved off. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Why do you feel like, I mean, in your years of experience as a counselor, why do you feel like a lot of people don't pay attention to their mental, to their emotional wellness rather? Okay, so either you use mental health or you or use emotional, emotional wellness, wellness, you're probably still talking in the same context. Yeah. Because the reality is many people do not understand mental health. Mm. So when they hear the word mental health, they panic. They yep. think it means being crazy, being mad or something. Mm. But no, not at all. Mental health is the same thing like when we talk about physical health. Okay, so you remember I said earlier that a man is made of a body, spirit and soul. Yep. So we have physical health, taking care often when we're challenged by maybe the medical practitioners. We have the spiritual mm -hmm. spirits, yep. okay? When we are challenged too, that is taken care of often time by either our pastors, imams, or traditional leaders. And then the soul, which is the top part of the mind. Often time, unfortunately, this soul part is often ignored mm -hmm. or we do not know how to care for it. Often when I ask people, if your doctors are there to care for your physical health, your pastors, your imams are there to take care for your spiritual health. So who cares for your soul's health? Who cares for your mind's health? Because the soul is the place of the mind. Okay? And then you, you, you want to begin to understand why people do not understand mental health. Why also? Because they think mental health is synonymous to a problem. Yeah. No. What mental health simply means is a state of wellness. It means you are, in fact, WHO had given us a definition um, some years back that kind of summarizes everything, saying specifically that mental health is a state of wellness, physically, socially, and emotionally. Mm -hmm. Once you are okay in all of that space, yeah. then you are fine. Mm -hmm. So that still tells us again that it's still the combination of the three, mm -hmm. the physical, the spiritual, and the mind. Mm -hmm. Okay? So... Mental health is totally different from mental illness. All right. So when we say mental health, we're saying a state of wellness. If there is a challenge, then we say mental disorder or mental illness. So if we do not say mental illness, there's no reason to panic. And even for mental illness, just the same way the physical illnesses has different categories and grades. So someone who has a headache 
it's just only someone who has it's different from someone who has um a stomach pain or someone who has um ulcer pain it's different from someone who has menstrual pain someone who has stomach pain also pain it varies. it varies the same thing for mental health too so you could have a very um short course pain okay that challenges your mental stability all right and almost all of us almost all of us at one point or the other would have had challenges with our mental health okay so it depends on the exposure or the challenges or the kind of support we have when we had those challenges that determine if it's going to go down into a mental disorder or lack of emotional wellness so basically say that people do not understand or accommodate mental health or emotional wellness is because they do not understand that it's still wellness. It's still about you. So if you're fine in one scope, then you have to be fine in the other scope. If you're not fine in the other scope, then you're not fine at all. I mean, that simply summarizes it. If you're not fine in the others in one scope, you can't be fine, you can't be fit in the other scope. Now, let's talk about happiness and sadness. Happiness is an emotion. Mm -hmm. Sadness is an emotion. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we pick on when we're sad. Mm -hmm. And then the way we express this emotion can be negative. And then that's when we now see people feeling down, mm -hmm. feeling one way or the other. Mm -hmm. This might affect our next door neighbor. As much as we want to take care of ourselves, we should also consider how it reflects or it transcends to the next door neighbor. So how can we undo us, our emotions when we are sad in such a way that it doesn't affect the next door neighbor? All right. Okay, so let me establish this first. There is no positive or negative emotions. Mm -hmm. All emotions, or let me put it this way better, there is no good or bad emotions, mm -hmm. okay? All emotions are good. Mm -hmm. Why? Because emotions play a role to give us feedbacks. So whether the ones we call positive or negative, they are all signaling or a way our mind is communicating with our body because oftentimes emotions are spontaneous, okay? They are reflections of what is going on in your mind. If you're happy, it means something had happened that made you excited and later. If you're sad, something had happened. So that sadness is actually a sign from your mind to your body, which is being played out to tell you something is wrong. Name any emotion, anger, um, jealousy, envy, whatever emotions you are having, it's your mind communicating to you that something is wrong. Yeah. And emotions plays those roles. So first of all, how do you then manage yours so that you don't rub it off negatively on other people? That's the question. Yeah. First, you need to even understand your emotions. You need to understand yourself. You need to know what your emotion is saying to you. Is it telling you you are not in a positive state? Is it telling you there is danger? For example, when I hear people talk about fear, fear is not so negative the way it's painted out. Fear is your mind telling you there's danger around. Okay, and so what do you do about the danger? It's about your reaction to the emotions. Now, once you sense that there's a negative emotions coming in and you understand that already, then you're looking at what caused it. What made you feel this way? How can you address it? And when you are fully aware of that and you are aware of how to address that emotion you're feeling at that time, how to answer it, okay? The next thing is, how does it not affect other people around you? Okay, and so if you are able to communicate it, you will likely minimize the risk of it affecting others. Mm -hmm. So for that, I always emphasize the place of mastering emotional languages. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Yeah. <laughs> it means being able to understand vocabularies to use to express your emotions. Yeah, well, so, okay, so so maybe you were you're throwing a tantrum right now, yeah. and then I'm asking you, oh, why are you hungry? And you're trying to tell me, no, I'm not hungry because reality, you might not be hungry, but you are displeased, or you are pissed off, or you are name it. There are different things that you could be feeling that is acting out the way you train your tantrums mm -hmm. okay so ability to be able to find the vocabulary to express that okay. so you could say no i'm not hungry and you said you're not hungry but you're screaming you're shouting yes i'm shouting or i'm talking because i need you to hear me that's why it's not because i'm angry 
Okay, so maybe right now I'm, I'm disappointed. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm disappointed. I'm not hungry. Okay, and so the same. Sometimes you see someone says, I'm not sad. Or I'm in a mood. Okay, so what mood are you in? Being able to communicate that is important. And so I often tell people, go and set out the dictionary. Look for similar synonyms or antonyms of a particular word you're trying to express. So you're going for hunger? Can you find other words that describes that? You're going for um, um, jealousy? Because sometimes it's not jealousy. You see some people trying to say, okay, eh, yeah, I have this thing about that person. What is it really? It's not hatred, but they're just this thing. And if you can't communicate it, people don't tell you, you hate her. And so you start feeling bad for hating someone, but actually it's not hate but because you can find the right word to describe it. And that puts a lot of people under stress. Hmm. Learning, I think that's what that has to be like one of my major take home from this conversation, right? Learning how to be expressive in whatever situation we find ourselves, yes. the right word. And that's the only way we would not affect or it doesn't rub off on our next door neighbor. Shortly, I think that's like the last question. Um, well, the theme is mental health care for all let's make it a reality and having to make it a reality is also seeking help understanding that there is a need for help and you have to seek help so as a counselor how would you say i mean i think you should i feel you should address the need for counseling sessions to people i mean that's the only way we can get help right yes. that's like one of the ways let me not say the only way it's one of the ways <laughs> yeah, to get help ways. yeah one of the major ways i think that yeah. explains it better how then i mean you should emphasize on the need for counseling session okay i cannot um i cannot overestimate the need actually because like i say if you have if you are physically well every part of your system works well if you're not emotionally well, you are still not well. The reason is because research has proven over time that some of the challenges we have with our physical body are because of negative hormones pumped by a negative emotion. Okay, like when you are hungry, the kind of um, the hormones pumped at that time is different from when you are smiling and happy. And some of those bowels could be negative and could actually harm your body system. Okay, so as big as physical well health is, as big as spiritual health is, same way mental health is. And if, if, because here's the question of why then do I need to go? If my pastor is there ready for me to seek counseling or my doctor is there for me to talk to, so why do I need a therapist? You need a therapist because they are the ones we refer to as doctor of the mind. They are the ones to take care of your mind. And professional counseling is amazing, is unique because it has high level of confidentiality, okay? Coupled with the fact that it also, it's not your friend, it's not a family member. This is someone who could be very objective, um, unbiased, and dealing with whatever issues you had brought in in a professionally trained manner. There's very, it's not, um, it's not just talking, because some people think, oh, it's, you just go there, you talk to somebody. No, no, no. It's not just talking. It's strategic um, ways of reaching into the mind, helping you to analyze and probably put things into perspectives and bringing out support also. So it's not enough, alone that, um, it's not enough that you are walking the journey to wellness alone. It's also important that you have a support system. And unfortunately, this generation, this time, this season, we lack so much of communal support, mm -hmm. like we've always had in Africa some years back. Now we have a lot of civilization whereby people re do not even get to see themselves so much. Family members will tell you they've not seen in a year because there's phone call. Okay, so therapy, and many of them also are so busy right now anyway, they don't even have time for you. Rather than you piling things up, pulling them on that and thinking I'm, I'm moving on, I'm moving on. Therapy is a systemic way strategic way to actually offload, deal with your pressure, and be able to manage life effectively. So I would always recommend, I tell people if you could book for checkups, because sometimes some people say nothing is wrong with me, so why do I need to go for therapy? But if you could book for physical checkups, some people book once in a year, twice in a year, nothing is wrong with you. You're just going to your doctor to ask, please check my intestine, check me. 
oh, beautiful. So if we could do that, then we also need to plan mental examination. You need to go in for mental assessment periodically. Once a year, twice a year, you don't have to have a problem before you go in for therapy. I think that explains why we had to come see a counselor and to dissect all of this information and pass the right information to people. Thank you very much for you, speaking too. with me. I think one take home for me would be points where you talked about expressing yourself, having the right word to express mm. yourself so mm. it doesn't hurt the next donor. But I think that's one. I fault at that. <laughs> I honestly fault that. I must admit to myself. I Many of that. us do. Yeah. Thank you for shedding light on that. Thank Great you too. And that will be all for on today's episode of the Women's Series. If you've got questions or you've got comments or you'd like to even speak to a counsellor, I bet we'll even hear how to reach out to you. How do we connect with you for people that want to? Oh, okay. On all social media platforms, just look for Timmy or your body at Timmy or your body. That's T-I-M-I or your body. Can Very well said. <laughs> At Timmy or anybody, you can reach out to her. And if you have any other counselor you'd like to reach out to, trust me, you can. Yeah. It's just a way and it's a stepping stone. To, it is, it's just a foot or a way to healing, yeah. as I've rightly said. And thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you've got questions or comments, kindly reach out to me at iomili.okotoyi.com. If you'd like to read more of our news stories, watch our videos, log on to www.proshiang.com. And follow us on all our social media platforms showing you on your screen. And until next time, thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.